Hello there, World of Tankers. I'm Drudels Blitz, and today I'm going to be playing tanks that just don't give a f about anything they come up against. The first tank we got here is a T95, a Tier 9 American super heavy tank destroyer that's been in the game pretty much since its release. And what's so special about this tank? Well, it's definitely not the top speed of 16 kilometers per hour, but it's pretty much impervious to anything coming at the tank because its frontal armor is reaching over 300 millimeters on the entire front. Slow and steady wins the race for the T95, and not only does it have some of the thickest frontal armor in the game, it's also paired with a 155mm cannon, dealing upwards of 640 damage per shot. And the craziest part about it is that it does 3000 damage per minute, and when you compare that to the T110E3, the tier 10 version of this tank, it only does 2900. And in this game, I was like, what are you doing, team? We need to go to the hills, because they are not going town. I looked at their lineup, and I knew this right off the bat. And if I went town, I was going to be killed, because I knew that my tank was too slow, I would have been left in the dust, and my team would have flanked all the way around. So I figured, you know what, I don't have any choice but to face the tanks frontally. And from my experience, the main weakness of a T-95 is not the enemy, it's actually your own team. Because as you saw in this game, I pretty much thought I was going to die. I thought that the T-92 was going to flank me, I thought I was going to have to deal with tanks in the front, and there really wasn't going to be much I could do. And that's what a lot of the issues are with this tank, because it only goes 16 kilometers per hour. Half the time when you run it and you've got heavies on your team, they're going to rush up to the heavy positions and they're all going to die because they're not going to wait for you. And that's what happens about 50% of the games you play, is before you can get into position, half the tanks on your team are dead, and by the time you get there, you're going to be flanked and killed. Because this tank has such a good damage per minute, people don't expect it to be able to reload so quick. So, for example, this Yag Panther here probably pulled out, thought he could shoot me and back up, and he sat out there reloading his second shell, and I was able to out-reload him almost. And that's what's just so crazy about this tank, and it's able to hold a line very, very well. If you've got two or three tanks, and you're in a good position where you can't get flanked, as you see in this game here, I put my tank in a position where I knew that I couldn't really get flanked by any outside sources unless they came all the way around me. So because of that, I was able to hold all of these tanks in front of me and easily fight them bouncing half of their shells. And the only reason this tank is not higher up on my list today is because for some reason, two years ago, Wargaming decided to nerf the lower plate armor of this tank, which was about 400 millimeters thick effective, is now about 250, which means all tier 10 tank destroyers, most tier 9 heavies, most tier 9s in the game can pretty much penetrate the lower plate as long as they were around 250 millimeters, couldn't even get through the lower plate or even most of the front at all unless they shot at the cupola. And that's how this tank should be. When you have a vehicle that only goes 16, extremely slow, doesn't have any side armor, any rear armor, it needs to be impenetrable in the front. And I don't know why Wargaming nerfed the frontal armor, especially now with all the Sheridans and the Progettos and everything like that. I definitely feel this tank deserves a buff in the frontal armor. I think it should be 100% impenetrable. Uh, unless you're using heat in like a tier 10 tank destroyer. And even with that nerf, the T95 is still a ridiculously strong tank to fight on the battlefield. And I'm guessing all of you guys have had that moment where you push on the T95 and you think he's alone, I'm easily going to get behind him, flank him and take him out, and somehow he manages to squeeze your tank right off the side of him onto the front and just tear into your armor. And that's just the thing the T95 can do, is somehow it always manages to get out of the extremely tricky situations hold the line, and come out in victory. And as you can see in the post-game results, I managed to do 4,300 damage. Still came out with a profit in credits because you really don't have to fire that much premium. And I was able to take out four tanks in the slowest tier 9 in the game. So it's definitely still a very strong tank. Power creep hasn't affected it that much. And you can still do very well as long as you know how to play it. And I would definitely suggest to pull out this tank or even pick it up just for a couple laughs and a little bit of fun. The next tank as well is a turretless super heavy tank destroyer, but this one being the AT-8 drops all the way down the tier 6. The AT-8, in my opinion, is the hardest tank tier for tier to take out in the game, and that's because of the past update, when Wargaming decided to give a massive buff to the frontal armor. The side port on the front, which used to be about 110mm thick, went all the way up to 190 and with the entire front already sitting at around 200mm on average, the tier 6 vehicles that go up against it can't penetrate it, like, at all. 
And because of this, you can literally sit out in the open, not worry about people petting you, and at least the 17 pounder this tank carries. In most games I play, I usually read the lineup, I figure out where I'm going to go, where I'm going to do best, everything like that. But when I play with the AT, I don't even bother to read the lineup. Because I know that if I'm in a tier 6 match, and tier 5s are on the enemy team in this game, they, even with heat, cannot penetrate the frontal armor of this tank. And most of them are going to struggle to even penetrate the side of it. And because of that, I can literally go wherever I want on the map and not really worry unless I do get flanked. Now, of course, I'm not going to go drive out alone without teammates, but as long as I do have somewhat of a team near me, I really don't have to worry about that much. And while this tank definitely is not the fastest, it still goes faster than the T95 at 20 kilometers per hour. And because it has a decent power to weight ratio, it is normally able to stay at that top speed. And it can also turn at 30 degrees a second, which makes it also very tricky to flank this tank if you are up against a knowledgeable player. And as you can see, currently I have four enemy tanks aiming at me. In a normal tank, I would GTFO. I would be getting the hell out of there as quick as I could because I do not want to die. But in the AT, I don't care. I know that my tank's got not only very good armor, it also comes with a thousand hit points. And that's more like tier 6 heavy tank hit points. So that's something that's really nice is you get hit points of a tier 6 heavy over a tier 6 tank destroyer. So not even if I do get pet. I also have the hit points to take a beating, and with this tank's 2,000 damage per minute, and pair that with the 171 millimeters of penetration, really nothing is going to be a threat that you do come up against. And as you can see, I'm literally pushing my tank right on the KV-1S as two other tanks are trying to penetrate me, and they're still failing to do so. And that's just what's so awesome about this tank, is it really just doesn't care about anything in front of it. And you can literally drive along, minding your own business, doing whatever you want, and not worry about anything pending you, as long as, of course, it is Tier 6 tanks. When you get up to Tier 7, it can be a little iffy on who's penning you, because when you go up against tanks like the Smasher, Type 62, they do have around 250 millimeters of heat pen but even with that it's still about a 50 50 when penning this tank because the gun has some pretty troll armor around it and as well the lower plate of this tank is sitting at around 270 millimeters thick so you have to hit the upper part of this tank and because of that it's still a very hard target to penetrate and that's just why it is so menacing on the battlefield and as you saw in this game, I still managed to pick up 4 kills, I was able to do 2,200 damage, which definitely isn't super impressive at tier 6, but I just sat there and just tapped the fire button the whole game. And that's what's so cool about this tank, is it doesn't even require an effort to do really well in it. And if you don't own this tank, or you haven't gone down this line, or you sold it because it wasn't that fun, I would definitely suggest to pick up this tank. Next up on the list, we have the VK16801P, which is the best tank by far in the entire game, and it's completely broken. Its armor profile is pretty much impenetrable to every single Tier 1, and even most Tier 2s in the game. And as well, the tank weighs 5 thousand tons, which means that it goes extremely fast at 200 million kilometers per hour. As you can see in this game here, I'm easily going to steamroll the entire team and show you guys just how overpowered this tank can be. What the f Are you serious? This tank is impenetrable. What? This guy's hacking. I'm reporting him right now. Sorry for that little hiccup there, guys. I didn't think that my VK-168, which is the hardest tank to kill in the game, was going to be taken out so easily. But on to the last tank I have here, the mouse. And the mouse just recently received a hit point buff of 3 thousand hit points which makes it the healthiest tank by far in the game now and because of that it is extremely hard to take out and i would definitely suggest run hit point buff if you don't have it on the tank but it's going to bring you up to 3180 hit points which is actually more hit points than the mouse on world of tanks pc gets which is extremely impressive if you think about it but the thing that makes the mouse so hard to kill is not only does it have a lot of hit points, it has a lot of armor to go with it, 188 tons of armor. And because of that, you are able to bully, push, rush people, and unlike the last two tanks, it does go a little bit faster at 25 kilometers per hour. So you can actually get into a position, or at least a lot faster than the last two tanks. And as you can see in this game, that's exactly what I'm doing. Today I decided, you know what, I'm gonna make a video on the hardest tanks to take out, and I'm like, 
okay, so I want to show the mouse, and the best way to do it is to just push the mouse right on the enemy team. And you can see I literally just drive it right at the 100. I'm driving it up against five tanks right now. You got the tank destroyer in the back, all these vehicles at the front, and I don't care because I have so many hit points. I've got my teammates behind me, I've got armor, and that's what your job in a mouse is to do. If you see a mouse player that is sitting behind a wall, just not really doing anything but backing up every 10 or 15 seconds to take the shot, and then it's hiding again while your teammates are just getting pummeled and pummeled by shells, that player's running it wrong. The main way to run a mouse is you want to be that push. When I run my mouse, as you saw here, when I push my tank forwards, what happens was my T-110 E3 behind me is like, hey, this guy's rushing forwards, which means he's taking the shots for me, I can deal damage, and he can deal some damage. And because of that, we're able to push through. And that's what makes the mouse so powerful. And what you don't care is because you have so many hit points, even if you get shot, it doesn't really affect you. And now that I have my team pushing through with me, uh, there's really nothing that can stop us by now in this game. However, I will say, sometimes when I run the mouse, you will get these players that when you do push and you really expect your teammates to push with you so you can do an iron fist and pretty much just demolish and steamroll their team, your teammates decide, you know what, you can go out there, I'm going to stay back here and do my thing. And then when that happens, you're pretty much screwed and you're losing all of your hit points or you're coming back with a lot less than you hoped. But even with that, the mouse is extremely strong and it can easily hold three or four tanks all on its own. And if you run a platoon of these, it is one of the funnest things you can ever do. When the VK100 pretty much came out and you could run two of them in the middle of the map and do whatever you wanted and still win, you can do that with the mouse now because you have like 6,400 hit points if you run two of them with hit point buffs, which is half of an entire tier 10 team normally. So that's just how many hit points the enemies have to take out. But again, just as I said for the other two tanks, if you have the mouse or you're thinking about grinding a new line to go down, I would 100% to pick up this tank because it's an amazing vehicle. Every game you play is usually fun and you'll be the last guy left, I can guarantee that. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I wanted to make a fun little video today, throw a couple jokes in it, have a little laugh because I normally have a lot more serious videos about tanks coming out. Especially with the community and the coronavirus and everything like that currently going on. I wanted to make a nicer video, uh, uplifting video. So I hope you guys did all enjoy it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button down below. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. Let me know why you didn't like it as well. And if you've stuck till this far in the video, I hope you would have already subscribed. But if you haven't, make sure to do so as well. And other than that, guys, stay safe out there. Have a great day, and I'll hope to see you in the next one.